Today's story is about Padre Pio, a friend forever. And here we see how two American airmen were protected by Padre Pio during their flights. This is in, in World War II over Nazi territory. It's quite an incredible story, so do stay tuned. Hello friends and welcome to our channel following Padre Pio on which we have a series of short stories about the incredible life of our great Saint Padre Pio. He was a Capuchin friar, mystic and a tremendous miracle worker. So do stay tuned to find out more about Padre Pio and also to see what his intercession could do for you. We encourage everyone to enroll your mass prayer petitions because we have a mass every Friday dedicated to Padre Pio. And if you enroll your petitions, we'll bring them to Padre Pio in this mass. So please just watch a video on the end screen how to do that. For everyone wanting to be part of our Padre Pio apostolate, do like our video and share the video with your friends and colleagues. Now in today's story, there is a particular fellow called Desmond Montague. And he's Canadian born and he was serving with the Allied forces during World War II as an airman and as a navigator on the bombers. And his squadron specialized in long distance, long range bombing missions over enemy territory. So it was an extremely dangerous mission that he had. Well, they were assigned, their base was near Foggia in Italy and not far away from Padre Pio's monastery. And that is where Desmond first heard the word stigmata, because the pilot of his aircraft, Edward Wiseman, had told him that there's a friar living up there somewhere in the mountains nearby who bears the wounds of Christ on his hands and his feet, the stigmata. Now Desmond was quite devout and he was always carried a rosary with him. It was kind of good insurance while he was flying. And he, he also had a priest, a brother, who was a priest. And this got Desmond's interest. He was now quite interested in what the pilot had said about the stigmata. But he was also absolutely skeptical because how could this? It couldn't be true, he was convinced. So the next day, him and a friend, they decided they're going to go and find out. And they walked from the Air Force Base right up there into, from Foggia, up into the mountains, the Gorgono Mountains, to the little town of St. Giovanni Rotundo, to Our Lady of Grace's Monastery, there to find Padre Pio. And to find out in particular, were these stigmata something true or not? And it was not an easy walk. But finally, Desmond and his companion Lyle, they made it up there to St. Giovanni Rotundo. And then curiously, they almost immediately ran into an American lady there. <laughs> up in the mountains, the Gorgona Mountains, her name was Mary Pyle. And she was a firm devotee and a spiritual daughter of Padre Pio. And Mary Paul confirmed, yes, Padre Pio did indeed have the five wounds of our Lord, of Christ on his body, the stigmata. And then she said, would you like me to take you over to the church so that you can meet him? Yes, they certainly would. So a short while later, Mary took them to the church of Padre Pio and up into the choir there and then tell them to remain there quietly and not to turn around when Padre Pio arrives, not to stare at Padre Pio because he's not an object of curiosity or someone on display. And then soon Padre Pio arrived in the church and he knelt down just behind them, a couple of benches behind. And all they could hear was his soft voice praying the rosary and the beads, the soft sound of the beads. That was it. And then after a while, Padre Pio reached out and touched them on the shoulder and they stood up to greet Padre Pio. And they said what really struck them, what they remember from this whole experience was his magnificent dark eyes and a beautiful smile that he had. And of course, now their, their whole mission was to see the, about the stigmata. So they discreetly tried to see, does he have the stigmata on his hands? Well, he was wearing those dark brown woolen gloves that he always wears, which covered the wounds, so they couldn't see. But Padre Pio was very friendly towards the officers, and then he gave both of them, um, Desmond and, and Lyle, a small little wooden crucifix as a gift. 
and he patted them on the head as well. And with that, they understood that Padre Pio would now be watching over them. Well, not many days later, they made another trip up to the monastery again. And this time they brought with them some supplies for Mary Pyle because they realized that it was pretty difficult living up there. And then they were able to go to Mass with Padre Pio. After that, they returned home to their base. Well, the following day, Lyle woke up and he was feeling very ill. And he was sent off to the, he was diagnosed with malaria and he had to be hospitalized. Well, Desmond and the rest of the crew of the bomber, they went on their mission without Lyle. And it was that night, at, late at night, and they, their destination was Budapest, which they had to bomb some infrastructure there. And they had to navigate by the stars. And once the mission was completed, they turned around and they headed home back towards Foggia. However, somewhere over Yugoslavia, they encountered some aircraft, uh, anti-aircraft fire, and they were hit, and their plane burst into flames. And the pilot lost control, and then he announced, we are going down, abandon the plane, everyone must jump. So at that stage, they did not actually wear their parachutes on them all the time, but they would just clip up, so they wore a harness, and they would clip up quickly to the parachutes so they could bail out. So that's all that they needed to do. But apparently the forces of the plane going down were so violent and it was so out of control that Desmond was unable even to clip into his parachute. It was just turned out to be something impossible and the plane was just nose diving towards the ground all the time. And at one point he would now became certain this was the end. He's now going to die. So he quickly said a prayer, Jesus, Mary and Joseph, help me. And apparently with that he just passed out and he lost consciousness. Well, when De Desmond regained consciousness, he was absolutely shocked to find he was on the ground, wrapped up in a parachute. How could it be, he wondered. He had not been able to even to clip in. And he looked around, there, there around him was the debris of the plane all over the place. And he had sustained some minor injuries, but he had survived. Every other person on the plane in the crash was dead around him. And then shortly after that, Desmond found his way to a little farmhouse and the farmer and the wife, they attended to his wounds. But he could see that they were both quite scared because he, they are now helping the enemy. This was German territory, Nazi territory at the time. And a short while later, um, he was handed over. Desmond was handed over to the Germans and he spent the remainder of the war in the prison of, of war camps only to be released on VE Day, on Victory Day. And after the war, when he first met his mother, she said, Desmond, I am convinced that it was the priest in Italy who saved your life. So to her, it was that obvious. And then sometime later on, now in Montreal, Canada, Desmond met up with his friend Lyle Bachelder. That was, if we remember early in the story, he had missed the flight because he had caught malaria. And it turns out that Lyle had made a complete recovery from his malaria. But it is estimated at that time, the mortality rate for an airman on any bombing raid was 50%. If you went on one raid, there was a 50-50 chance you'd come home. The next raid, another 50-50. So that would be a quarter, your chances in, would be a quarter over two raids or an eighth over three raids. And Lyle had gone on to complete 60 raids over enemy territory, all completely safely. So one of the statisticians is going to have to help me out. What are the chances of that? I come up with an answer of something like, one in a billion, billion, billion. It's some incredibly small chance of having survived 60 raids when on any particular raid, there's a 50% chance of not coming back alive. Now, when Desmond's brother, Father Robert Montague, heard these stories, he heard of these survival stories that were linked to Padre Pio, he now wanted to make the trip to St. Giovanni Rotundo so he could go there and he could thank Padre Pio personally for his intercession. And it was only years later that he was able to go in 1963. Father Robert made the trip, 
But he was concerned as he was making the journey there, going through Italy. He realized, I only speak, it, I only speak English and Padre Pio only speaks Italian. How difficult it is going to be to communicate his thanks. He arrived in the town and that problem simply melted away because one of the first people he met was fluent in both languages. So he asked him, would you be able to help me and convey my thanks to Padre Pio? And the man happily agreed to this. So then Father Robert and his newfound friend, they headed off towards the monastery. And when they arrived there, Padre Pio walked out directly to them, up to the translator. And before the translator could even open his mouth to say anything, Padre Pio said, Tell the young priest from Canada that I am aware he has come to offer his thanks on behalf of his entire family for my intercession in saving his brother's life during the war. <laughs> so, how is that for a story about Padre Pio? Absolutely impossible things happen in, in my opinion. Next time on this channel, we're going to have a look at another story, very interesting story on Padre Pio and how he helped some visitors to his monastery. He helped them to discern their callings in life, their purpose in life, their vocations, as we call it. So please do stay tuned. Do join us for that video. And once again, we ask everyone, do enroll your Mass praying petitions for Friday's Mass to Padre Pio. And help us in the apostolate, like the video, share the video, make sure that you are subscribed to our channel and make sure once you've subscribed, you also have to click a reminder bell so you will get notifications of future videos.